Okay. Uh, let's continue on the Euler equation. Let me share my screen. There we go. That's where we are last time. No, 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 no. Okay. So uh, if you don't remember, this is the equation in the box. Okay. Uh, all the equation works for any direction. It doesn't have to be X, doesn't have to be Y. It can be any direction. That's why it's a very general form. That's why it's partial partial L. L is any direction, okay? However, it has to be consistent. Whatever direction your acceleration is, notice I have a subscription here, AL, okay, in the right-hand side. Whatever the acceleration direction is. So when you look at the problem statement, first you find out, you know, okay, this is the Euler equation problem and it gives you acceleration. So it's definitely all Euler equation problem. Then the second thing is look at problem statement, what is the direction for the acceleration? If it's y direction, in the left hand side of the equation, you take partial derivative with respect to y, okay? If it's z direction acceleration, take partial derivative with respect to z, okay? So that has to be consistent, okay? Then apply this equation, just like what we see last time in the piston ex example. Okay, you write down the equation, you see, along the z direction, you know your acceleration a z is 100 meter per second squared. So it's a z in the right hand side. So you take derivative with respect to z. Okay, the dz here has to be consistent with the a z here. Okay, then after that is take integration, right? This is a differential equation. You have to take integration to solve it, okay? So integration in all us problem, all equation problem, the limits is very important, okay? Just like a hydrostatic problem, you need to have two section, two locations to compare. Same thing here. You need to have two location, two locations to compare, okay? At least one location, you know the information. Obviously, in this problem, you have to pick two locations inside the fluid. Okay, so this is a fluid equation, right? Fluid equation. So you pick two locations to bound your locations inside the fluid. One and the two. One and the two. Okay, so dz, you find the z of the one and the two. Right? 0 2.1, 0 0.1. Left hand side, left hand side, just put a 1 and 2 there because you have two terms in, in the derivative, right? So when you take integration, you put a limit. Now you know, okay, P2, gamma Z2 minus P1, gamma Z1. These are the two and the one, the two limits of the integration. Right hand side is easy, it's just Z, just DZ itself. So you have a certain limits, the limit values, okay? Zero and upon one. So calculating it is, is a piece of cake, right? You can calculate the P1 on the surface. So you can calculate the force, the, the piston surface experiences, right? P1 times the area, if you're given the area, if you can measure the area, okay? So then you can calculate the force. Very practical problem, okay? Piston is a very common mechanical device, okay? You know, when it changes direction, of course, it has acceleration, right? Going up and down, up and down, of course, you have acceleration, okay? When you have acceleration, you will have a force on your surface. Okay, so this example gives you the relation, right? Between the motion and the force. That's all we're gonna do dynamics, okay? All the dynamics problem is relate motion to the force or pressure in our case many, many times. Okay, Does that makes sense? That's a, that's a review, okay? Any question before we move on to the next example? I'll give you one more example. Okay, 
Oh, by the way, I posted a set of homework for chapter four on Moodle. Okay, that's the first set. You will have two sets, okay, because chapter four is kind of long. Okay. Uh, you can, I think, start working on the first set for homework. I will post the second set after I finish chapter four. Okay. So next example, a truck. That's example 4.3. Okay. Okay. Seems like I drew a good track here. <laughs> Dimension. Uh, 20 feet long. For the load is 20 feet long. Six feet. Okay, gasoline in there. So I guess the gasoline, specific weight of the gasoline is 42, a little bit lighter than water, right? 42 pounds per cubic feet. Okay, specific weight is given. Okay, and uh, you know, the, the driver hit, hit a brick. Okay, the driver hit a brake. So you have a deceleration. Okay, 10 feet per second square. If you have a deceleration, A equals to 10 feet per second square. Okay. Okay, let me first ask you before we move on to the question, uh, you know what, you know, understand the situation? You hit a brake, what happens? If you have a sudden break, okay. Which direction the gasoline gonna move? Move forward, right? Yeah, the next gasoline gonna rush forward. Okay, I'll hit the brake. Good. Now educated guess, could you tell me on which location in the in the load in the truck that it has the highest pressure? At the front, at the bottom. Front and at the bottom. Right? Everybody agree? That's common sense, right? It rush forward. Okay. The front will have higher pressure, right? The bottom will be higher, will be even higher because it's lower location. Okay, so let's find out what is the pressure on this highest point. You know, it's a practical problem. Dr. Zhang. Yes. Is it an assumption that the whole trailer is full of uh, gasoline? Yeah, it is full of gasoline. Okay, so what is the pressure value here? You know, it's important. You know, your trailer has to be strong enough to withhold, you know, withstand this, you know, high pressure. You know, you don't want the trailer break, right? Sometimes it could be, it's a tremendous amount of force, a huge, huge pressure, right? You, you wanna make sure it's strong enough. So for, for you to design something like this, design a tank like this, you, you, you need to know, you, as an engineer, you need to do a simple calculation to see what is the maximum pressure in your, in your design, okay? You need to make sure that part is strong, not leaking, you know, this kind of things, right? So every design, is based on your calculation. Okay, you need to calculate the design requirement. Then they can design something you know, for it, right? Okay, that's uh, that's the process. Okay, so how how do we calculate it? Pressure in the bottom. Okay, uh, you want to start a point. You know, first of all. First of all, do you agree this problem you need to use Euler's equation? That's the first question you need to ask yourself in test, in the final exam or whatever, you don't have the textbook with you, you don't have nothing, you know, it's everything is in your brain, right? In your mind. So I think when you see a problem like this, you need to ask yourself, do I know which equation I'm gonna use to solve this? To solve this? 
Okay. What evidence tells you that you need to use Euler's equation? Any hint in the problem statement here tells you how you're going to use Euler's equation? How many equations you learned so far? Acceleration, pressure, and gamma. Yeah, uh, gamma, many problems we have. Every problem we have gamma. Okay, pressure, hydrostatic pressure, those problems we also use pressure, has pressure. But the strong evidence here is acceleration. It gives you an acceleration. It's how many equations you learned so far in fluid mechanics this class? Well, let's do a review, okay. <laughs> How many we learn? Maybe your finger is enough. You, you learn the shear stress, right? Viscosity equation, that's one. What else? Surface tension, okay, two. And the uh, hydrostatic principle, okay? P1 gamma Z1, P2 gamma Z2, right? Hydrostatic principle, number four. Surface force, surface force in the center of pressure. Okay, what else? Number five, maybe buoyancy. Okay, number six. Uh, how do we calculate the acceleration? Right, that 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 that's number six. Number seven, Euler's equation. Okay. Did I miss anything? You see, helpful. Your, your fingers are enough, right? We have seven equations so far. So when you see a problem like this, you know, problem solving skill, okay? It's just like, a, don't, don't be worried and afraid and, and just, just then it's totally blank in your mind. It's so complicated, I have no clue. No, don't think like that. When you see a problem like this, first question you ask yourself, which, which equation among this seven equation I have to use to solve this problem? Okay, how many equations that you learned so far in this seven equation has acceleration in it? Okay, that's just all this equation. And then number six is what, to calculate the salary. You don't need to calculate, it's given. So, 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 so only all the equation, right? So, no, I'm, I'm spending two minutes in here talking about this is because later on you, you will have more equations then, but, but you can see a comprehensive problem like this, you have to have a starting point, okay? That's the way you go through your mind, which equation to use, okay? Don't be scared, worried, and uh, uneasy on a, on a, you know, then totally, totally lose your concentration, you know? Then it's bad, right? So, so, so that's a procedure you take, okay? It's it definitely going to use Euler equation to so, solve this, okay? So if you use Euler's equation, just like uh, hydrostatics, you, you need to know, select two points to compare. You know you're going to take integration, okay? When you take integration, you need uh, two points, two limits, okay? Hopefully you know you, one of the two points, you know all the information on it, okay? The same way as you solving hydrostatic problem, right? You need to find a reference point that you know the, all the information, then compare to the answer. Okay, the other evidence is acceleration is in this direction, okay? Let's as assume this is x direction, okay? So your Euler equation definitely has to be on the x direction, comparing the two points along the x direction. You can compare a point from high to low, Okay, the two points you pick to compare has to be along x direction, will be parallel to the ground. Okay, will be parallel to the ground. In the one point, you need to know all the information. Okay, so which point do you know all the information in this problem? You know pressure, right? You need to know pressure. You know you need to know pressure because P, you see, look at here, P gamma Z, P gamma Z. Then the right-hand side, the acceleration, right? Is that right? 
So which point? First of all, you need to choose almost certain you're going to choose all the corner points in the tank. Is that right? The corner points. Okay, pick two of them. Okay. So which of the four corner points you know all the information? Elevation as well as pressure. You study from that, start from that point. Okay. Tell me which, which point uh, you know pressure value. I think elevation, you know, location, we know all the four points, right? Pressure. The top left. Top left. What is the pressure in top left? Zero. Zero. That's right. Absolutely correct. Okay, because uh, the gasoline rush forward, it barely touched the back of the, the tank. Okay, it barely touched it, so there's no pressure on it. And at this point is on the top. You don't have the hydrostatic pressure from the gasoline either. Okay, so you know you're gonna choose this point as your point one. Okay, so then what is the point two? You know, it has to be on the X direction. Right, the, the other point. It has to be parallel to the ground. So you pick the one. If you pick one here, you definitely certain the two points here. Although this two is not my answer point, my, my question point, but you have to. If you want to relate to one, you have to relate it to. You have to use one, you have to use two. Does that make sense? Did, did you see my thought process here? Okay, this is the way you solve all, all this equation. You have to have this process. You have to fix the two point. Okay, then between the two point, now you can write down the oil equation. Okay, let's write it down. You know, all the equation problem, you to, when you write down the oil equation, basically you don't need much of the information. As long as in your mind, you know where to go. D over dx. Negative rho. AX, basically that's equation you want to use. Only thing I want to check if I will grade the order equation problem, I want to grade, if I grade, I'm looking at these two. First of all, is the X correct in this problem? You use X direction for acceleration, that's acceleration. The second, are they the same in the left and the right? Okay, that's how I grade it. If I give you a quiz today, then if you write down this equation, this is the point, okay? You have to write down the equation to earn a point, okay? Then, then I will check, see if you use AX here, if you use D over DX here. If you are, they are the same, that's it, you get the points. Okay, that makes sense, everybody? I want you to just strictly follow the procedure. That's what engineer do. Okay. Any questions so far? The point will be used, one, two point will be used when you put down the limit, when you take integration for this differential equation. Okay. Right now, the equation, we don't need it. I want to, right? The next step I need. So I move dx to the right hand side. Okay, now I can take integration. Both sides. Okay, now I need to place the limit. Okay, I need to place the limit. What is the limit for the dx, for the x? So I guess you want to set your coordinate, right? Your coordinate in the x is positive x is this direction. Obviously, one point, point one, you want to put down at the, at the zero coordinate for x, right? That makes sense. The, the, the fluid moving forward, right? Moving from the left to the right. Why not just set like this, right? So that it will be the same as the motion direction, okay? So dx, the limit will be start from one. Oh, I'm sorry, from zero. 
Point one, x is zero. Okay. Point two, what is x for point two? 20. 20 feet. 20 feet. Yeah. Okay. So P gamma Z, let's just put one, two here, but actually it's very easy. Okay. Okay, after I take integration, I will put in the value for one and two, okay? For both P and the Z. Okay, now I take integration. This is one DP plus gamma Z, right? When you take integration will be P plus gamma. One, two, two. Okay. Right hand side is negative rho AX. I don't put the values there. See, notice I put the value at the last. Okay. Then one DX, right? Become X zero to 60. I'm sorry, 20. Is that right? Okay. Everybody, you with me? You need to know how to do the integration like this. Okay. That's the bottom line, okay? If you don't know how to do integration, you shouldn't be in this class, okay? Okay, now next step, let's put a P2 plus gamma Z2. I write it down before I make decision to something zero or not, right? Minus P1 plus gamma Z1, okay? Equals to negative rho AX x2 minus x1, which is 20 minus zero. Okay, since I already have the number. Okay. Everybody good with this step? Okay. Professor, uh, to the right side of the equation, is that x20 minus zero? Yes, 20 minus zero. Oh, that's 20 minus zero. Yeah, you walk. Do you, do, you, do you understand why it's 20 minus zero, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. okay. Good. Okay, now I think the right hand side, when you're examining the, the, this, this equation right now, you, you want to go to the next step, right? You're examining it before you move on to the next step. Okay. Do you know everything in the right hand side? I think probably you need to know the density, uh, density of the, of the, of the, but you can get it out pretty easily, right? Density, I forgot it's uh, G is what? 32.2 in the English unit, right? Is that right? Yeah, 32.2, okay. You should get the density from gamma. Do you agree? What is gamma? Gamma is rho g, right? Everybody, did you did you follow me? Okay. Is that right, everybody? So rho is gamma divided by G, okay, you should easily get. AX is given, okay, negative 10 feet per second square, be careful. It's deceleration. You hit the brake, right, decelerates. So it's negative, negative 10. Feet, uh, feet per second square. Okay, so you know everything in the right hand side of this equation. Okay, do you know everything in the left hand side? So is your unknown in the left hand side? Okay, if you want your unknown, right? Okay, good, you're happy. When you see this, you're happy. Okay, my unknown is in there. I want to calculate. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I thinking? P1 is zero. Right? My unknown is, I want to calculate two. Based on two, maybe we can calculate the three on the bottom. Our unknown is not in there, but but at least I one important value is there. Okay. Okay. So any zeros. Okay. 
Hmm? Anybody? Any P1 with zero? Yes, P1 is zero, right? We, we, that's the reason we start with P1. Okay, we decided to use P1. Okay. Hold on. So, okay. Anything else we can get rid of? Or equal to zero? Who's that? If you're not talking, please turn it off. <laughs> okay. I'm wanting you to answer me. Anything else in the left hand side? You can simplify. Are the gamma Z's gonna cancel? That's right. Z2 and a Z1. You know, the vertical is Z dimension, right? Are they the same? Mm -hmm. All right, they are the same, right? Okay, so it's a minus here, right? Gamma Z2 minus gamma Z1, right? So these two can be canceled. It's not zero, it's canceled. Okay, so you can directly calculate the P2. Now I'm putting numbers. Negative 42 pound per cubic feet divided by 32.2 meter per second square, right? Times, careful, AX here, negative 10 feet per second square times 20. You have to have two negatives, negative, negative, then pressure become positive, right? okay? If you just put 10 feet per second square there, then it will be a negative pressure, which you know it's true, it's not true. Okay, that's why you need also need the sign in the front. All the equation has a negative sign on the right hand side. Okay, what is the value, anybody? Now you can calculate it, right? Pressure equals, I can give it to you. P2 equals to 261 PSF. PSFG, okay. You know, from the equation, directly calculated from the equation, it has to be PSF, nothing PSI. Wouldn't the yeah. gravity be feet per second squared? Not meter per second squared. I, I think uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it should be feet per second squared. You're right. Thank you. Okay. So remember one thing in the English system, nothing actually from those equations directly calculation calculated from the equation never come out to PSI. Although PSI is a common used unit. Okay, always PSF. G means gauge, right? Always a PSI. But if you want to convert to PSI, it's 144, right? Divide on 144 or multiply by 144 from PSI. PSI should be much smaller. Remember this. PSI should be smaller per inch square, right? Okay. The value should be smaller. That's why it's always divided 144, then become PSI. Okay. That makes sense, guys? Okay, so this is not the end of the story, right? This is the pressure on two. We're we're looking for pressure on three. Okay, so what is the next step? Do it all over again using the y direction. But uh, good using y direction. You have to do it again. Again, you have to do between two and three, right? That's what you mean. Okay, so between two and three, right? The first step here we did is between one and two, okay? Between one and two, we have the Euler equation, okay? Between one and two, we have Euler equation. Now between two and three, what equation are we gonna use? Three. 
That's still all that equation. Is, is the fluid gonna move from the top to the bottom when you hit the brake? No. No, right? This is the ideal case. Well, in the reality, probably it's turbulent in there. You know, it's a little bit turbulent, you know, it goes circulate. It, a little bit motion from the top to bottom too. In reality, everything is not perfect, right? But, but, but we're not considered imperfect, <laughs> right? Situation. This is the ideal situation. So the fluid only go forward. Okay, it's not going from top to bottom or bottom to top. So then, then no motion between two and three because your brake is basically create acceleration backward. Okay, so your motion is only in the x direction. So if there's no acceleration between two and three, what equation are you going to use between two and three? Hydrostatic. Yeah, hydrostatics. Great. You know, you, 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 you're, you're in your mind, you just decide which equation to use. If you decided without thinking, don't wasting your time, write down the equation. After you write it down, let's see how it goes and if can we do anything, okay? Do you agree, first of all? Actually, how do you, I told you last time, I mentioned it last time, hydrostatic equation is a special case for all our equation. All our equation actually is more general. Okay, when the acceleration is equal to zero, which is this case, no acceleration, right? The end, right hand side becomes zero, then the take integration P plus gamma Z become equals C, basically it's hydrostatic equation. Okay, so it is a special case for all this equation, hydrostatic. So, but we can just directly use this hydrostatic equation we already derived in chapter three, okay? So, so then we'll look at this. Do, do I know everything? Now I'm, I know it's there, right? right? Now I'm so tall, oh, good. My, I'm, I see the light, see the other, other side of the tunnel. <laughs> okay, good. My unknowns finally appears. Okay. So, okay, in order to calculate the P3, do we know everything else? Obviously we do, right? P2, we just calculated. To 61 BSF, okay. We, we know both Zs, how many feet apart, six feet apart between two and three. Z2 and Z3 is basically, gamma is 42.2, right? Pound force per cubic feet. I like to put all the values, okay. So Z2 minus Z3 is just six, six feet minus zero feet, right? Equals P3. I move the two Z's together. Is that right? Hey, I have everything. Okay, so P3 can be easily calculated. What is the value? Oh, P3 equals, uh, so dark here, what is the value? 513? Yep, 513. PSFG, okay. Okay, so we find the highest pressure point in the fluid, in this tank. Okay, 513 PSFG. In terms of PSI, how many? How many PSI? Divided by 144, about four, four PSI. Okay, what is atmospheric pressure PSI in terms of PSI? Anybody? Come on, you guys know this, right? What is atmospheric pressure in PSI? 14.7. Yeah, 14.7, that's the uh, atmosphere. So it's about four PSI above atmospheric pressure on the corner of that tank. Okay. 
Okay, any questions for this? Do you know how to apply all the equations to? Problems? So even even for the uh, second part of this one, if we would have used Euler's equation, we still would have got the same answer because it would would have just been zero on the right side, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what I tried to say because it's a zero on the right side. It becomes a hydrostatic equation. You take the derivative of d over dz actually equal to zero. Okay, then you. You can integrate it with the limit, so it's z1, z2, same thing. Okay. Okay. So is that good, everybody? Again, remember that's along the along the along the acceleration direction. You, if you want to apply all this equation. You, if you are having this equation, you have to, uh, the, the derivative are consistent to the acceleration dir uh, direction. So what if uh, something move on the slope? So it will be good for you to convert the slope, you know, put a coordinate a dimension on the slope, along the slope. You change your x along the slope. Okay, then you can have an acceleration on, on, on the slope as an x direction. Then you take derivative with respect to x. Okay, that makes sense? So any practical problem? I, I don't wanna give you the quiz on this. You know, I, I, have, I have to do some, I don't have time today. So for example, you have, if you have a car on a slope, okay, let's say it's speeding down to meter per second square. Okay. So what are what are the what are the pressures on all four points? Can you calculate this? You have gamma, let's say water. Okay. I have a dimension. Let's say two meter height is one meter. Okay. Can, can you find the pressure point? And can you find the force on the front? Oh, force is not just pressure, but you have to have the, you know, the, the corner pressure first, right? Okay. Do you know how to do this? Do you want to make this as a quiz? <laughs> That means you don't know how to do it still. Okay, let me make this as a take home assignment, right? Maybe next class I, I give you the same quiz like this. Maybe not. Okay, go practice. See if you can do this problem. Okay, if you can, good, you're good. Uh, all that's a question. Okay, does that make sense? Same thing. You exactly. said it's gamma of water inside yeah, the car yeah, yeah. Well, gamma water that doesn't matter it just test yourself to see if you know how to do this okay it's exactly the same way as you did we did here for the truck okay as long as you specify this is the x direction you have a ax here you take derivative respect to x i don't see a problem here okay that's exactly we, we don't even have to worry about angles or anything just set set that as your as your axis and, and uh, go for it from there. Yeah, I, I think probably eventually you need an angle because when you reach the hydrostatics, probably you need the angle, okay. I said 30 degree. But for the Euler part, you actually don't need the angle. Because why you need the angle? Because your Z direction, you have to keep this. When you do the hydrostatics, when you do the hydrostatic between two points, okay, it's along Z direction, right? Z1 minus Z2 or Z3 minus Z2, something like that. So you only give the dimension for the, for the, for the car, for the vehicle, but vertical this, the difference, you need to use the angle, right? That's the only place you need the angle. But when you, when you apply the Euler equation, just like we apply the Euler equation between one and two in the truck, between the first two problems you pick, the uh, first two points you pick, you don't need the angle, okay?
Yeah, if, seriously, practice it. I don't, you, I don't know. I don't know the next Tuesday I give you the quiz or not, but it's good for you. If you practice this, if you know how to solve this, you learn the knowledge basically, okay? You, 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 you pay money, pay tuition here to learn. It's not just getting, have a course pass to get a grade, okay? It's to, to learn the knowledge. I would suggest you do it and see if you know how to solve all that, all that problem. Okay, that makes sense? Good. Okay, I also have homework problems. Okay, take a look. I already assigned on the model. Okay, now, next is one of the most important knowledge you need to learn from this class. Bernoulli equation. Okay, we, we have like a, a curriculum audit or something like that. It's not audit. It's curriculum discussion with 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 industry people, prime managers, or those kind of in, the, in, the, in our area. We, we we always ask, what, what do you guys need us to teach on different classes for number of fluids? I did ask a question, and the prime manager said, "Hey, Bernoulli." <laughs> if you if you know Bernoulli, you can you just you can go to work, okay. So that shows how important the Bernoulli equation is, okay. But actually, what that means is uh, chapter seven. It's not really Bernoulli in chapter four, okay. Chapter four is for the ideal situation, okay, Bernoulli. But what they really mean is the Bernoulli equation with uh, all those losses, everything, all the details. But it's actually chapter seven and chapter ten later part, okay. Now we're looking at the ideal situation here. Okay, so Bernoulli is also a special case for Euler equation. Okay, Euler equation is the starting point. Okay, it's the most general equation. Okay, so it's a starting point. But as you know, you already know, you have to take process to calculate acceleration. Euler equation has a limitation here. You have to know the acceleration. Acceleration is not a directly measured value, right? Do you agree? You, 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 in the market, you never see a, a meter say, hey, acceleration meter. I never see a, something like that, okay? You never can measure acceleration directly. You always measure velocity then calculate acceleration, okay? That already seems like not easy. Oh, you know, it's easy, but it's tedious, right? You have to take derivative like that. You know, the field engineer or maybe the technician, how do they know derivative, you know? So, 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 so it kind of not convenient to apply all the equation to most of the applications, okay? So the goal is to find, directly find the relation between pressure and the velocity, okay? That's the goal, because velocity you can directly measure. Most of the in industry system, you have a flow meter, okay? You measure the flow rate, you can get the velocity easily, right? Did you, did you, did you, did you follow me? That's the reason, okay, why people invented the Bernoulli equation, okay? They want to directly relate pressure to velocity. Okay, so that's the goal. So actually, let's write down the Euler equation. It's a starting point. So it's Euler equation. Let's say arbitrary direction L, P plus gamma Z equals to negative rho, AL, any direction, okay? You always can use this, but it's difficult to find acceleration sometimes. Okay, so let's say, hey, let's substitute the acceleration. We know the expression for acceleration, right? Okay, acceleration equals to velocity, something velocity. Why not we substitute the velocity into the acceleration term? See how it goes. Maybe it's too difficult to solve after we substitute. Okay, but let's at least try. Okay, what is AL? Let's say 1D, let's make an assumption here. No, not, not necessary 1D. It's usually is 1D. Uh, do we want to limit us? Yeah, let's do 1D. Most of the problem people were, were using Bernoulli is in the pipe. We can assume the pipe flow is 1D flow. Okay, so what is acceleration then? partial V over partial T plus D 
partial V over partial L. Is that right? Please, everybody, please memorize these. Acceleration equation, you need to memorize for 1D at least. Okay, that's last quiz, right? It did good on the last quiz, okay? That's the equation, okay, for acceleration. Okay, before we substitute, let's make another assumption. Steady state. <laughs> the partial partial T is always not good, okay? If we can make it steady state, let's, let's assume it's steady state. Okay, but for the, 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 again, for the piping system, you know, it's steady state. It's just running, it's forever running, you know, it's all the same, it doesn't change with time. So, so that's probably a valid set assumption for most of the actual practical application. Okay. Okay, so instead of two terms, now I have one terms. Then we'll substitute this into the Euler equation, maybe acceleration, you know, it's one term and replaced by one term. Let's see how, it, how does it look. Okay. Can we solve this? If we can, then that's good. We can directly solve pressure from velocity. Okay. That's actually form. That's a form with two big assumption here, 1D and the steady state. Okay. Well, it's otherwise it's too complicated. You know, you need to have assumptions. Okay. If you want to achieve something like a pressure velocity relationship, you have to have assumptions. Okay. Otherwise, you know, you never get there. Okay. What can we, what can we do for this equation? Can we solve this? Oh, I, no, I do notice uh, in the left-hand side is a partial partial L, in the right-hand side is a partial partial L. Can we get rid of them? We cannot. This thing is not directly solvable because you have a V outside of the derivative. You, you can, can just... You can plug in, what is it, AL for V, partial V, partial L. Then you become A again. You didn't solve it for purpose. <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to stick with V. Okay, that's our goal, right? But here, because of the nonlinear turn in the right hand side, you can't directly get rid of partial, partial, partial L because there's one V outside the derivative. Okay, so that's why you need the calculus. Okay. I think you learned it here. You can, can you move this V inside the derivative? Then if every, all the Vs are inside derivatives, the both partial partial L, partial partial L can be canceled both sides. So you don't need to have a differential equation. You become an algebraic equation, okay? The field engineer or technician like it. They don't know how to do derivative. They don't know how to do integration. Okay, maybe, maybe they do, okay? But it's at least not convenient. Okay, you need to move this outside V into the derivative. Do you know how to do that? That's why we need a calculus is very useful. If you move the in, become V squared over two. Is that right? Because you can check it. Partial V squared over partial L, what is that? It will be 2V. Okay, 2V, the two canceled. Two and two cancel, become partial V, partial V. Is that right? You know, do, do you see what I mean? How do you do the derivative of this? It's 2V partial V partial L, right? Then you multiply by a half here, multiply by a half here, become V partial V partial L. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if you still remember this, but you, you should. Okay. Okay. That's why we need a calculus. Okay. Engineer do need a calculus. At least you, when you talk to people, you pretend you know. If you don't, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it doesn't look good on you. Okay. 
Uh, now you can get rid of the partial partial L, okay? No big deal. Can you? Right, both sides had the partial partial L. Uh, rho is a density. Doesn't matter, it's a constant. So it will be P plus gamma Z equals to negative rho times half V squared. Actually, when you get rid of it, you, you need to plus a constant here. How do you get rid of the partial partial L? You basically take integration, right? Indefinite integration, okay? If you take indefinite integration, you have to have a C here. So let's move the negative terms to the left-hand side. So P plus gamma C plus half rho V squared equals C. Okay, here we go. This is the famous Bernoulli equation. Okay, does it sound, look familiar to you? What's the hydrostatic equation? P plus gamma C equals constant, right? This is hydrostatic. Okay, great. Now we have, we can include the velocity term there. Half rho V squared. Okay, then become Bernoulli for the flowing fluid. Okay, hydrostatic is a stationary fluid, not no motion, right? So, so that tells you when you solve problem for using Bernoulli, you will use exactly the same procedure as hydrostatics. You will use exactly the same procedure, which you need one location, one location to. Okay, to compare on um, the location one, location two, you will have P1 plus gamma Z1 ha plus half rho V1 square equals P2 plus gamma Z2 plus half rho V2 square. Same procedure, just adding one term. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so total six terms for two points to compare, right? So you can calculate the one unknown in this equation. Okay, either you know pressure, you know uh, velocity, you know uh, elevation. Anyway, you can calculate one unknowns using this equation. Okay. Bernoulli give you the pressure and the velocity relationship, okay. Before we look at the actual example, pressure. Uh, yeah, let's give you, let me give you the, the head form. Remember, this is the pressure form, right? In the hydrostatics, we also using the, the head form. In industry, people use the head form but much more than the pressure form. Okay, so please get used to the head form. Okay, I think it's more useful. Uh, divided by gamma, for every term to convert pressure into head, okay? P, ah, come on. P over gamma plus C plus V square over two G equals to a constant. This is the head. Okay, so pressure head, okay, that's what people talk, talk about, or people call it, okay, in the industry. Pressure head, if they talk about pressure head, is P over gamma, pressure head. Elevation head is just a C, just elevation, okay, it's also a head. And the velocity head, you really need to know what is a velocity head, it's not velocity, velocity head, it's V square over 2G. Okay, you have to see the language right, as an engineer, right? You know, you, you get an education and it's not only know the knowledge, but also know how, what, what, what's the name of those. You need to say, talk like an engineer, right? Okay, that's why we learned this too. Elevation head, pressure head, and the velocity head. These are the two same equations. You can use either one, it doesn't matter to solve a problem. Okay, so, but I wanna introduce the head equation to you. 
Okay, so you will see a lot of application. What is the pressure velocity relationship? Let, let's say you have two points in the fluid, they have the same elevation. Elevation doesn't matter. Sometimes you can easily control. Okay, you know how high, how low. Okay, let's say, okay, for two points, they have the same elevation. I'll run out of paper here. Okay, can I use this here? I just need a little bit of notes here. Let's say, hey, I have a pressure. P1 plus gamma Z1 plus half rho V1 square equals to P2 plus gamma Z2 plus half rho V2 square. Let's say we have a nozzle, a nozzle like this. expansion later okay so you have the same fl flow coming in same flow going out the flow rate the same have everywhere okay let's say you have a pressure here and the pressure inside the duct okay do, 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 can you have an educated gas let's say hey inside the duct you have a higher pressure or lower pressure what about the velocity you have a velocity inlet and the velocity inside the duct which has which velocity is higher? The flow squeezing, right? Is the speed increased or decreased inside the pipe? Sure, narrow part. Common sense, right? This is a common sense, right? Anybody? I want you to answer me. I want you to relate to the knowledge to the reality. The speed increased or decreased inside the narrow portion? The speed increase. The speed increase. Do you agree, everybody? Yes. Pressure energy turns to velocity when your uh, diameter gets lower, and vice versa. You, you don't need to think about energy here because that's something called conservation of mass. Okay, so the flow rate is the same everywhere. Okay, velocity is the flow rate divided by the cross sectional area. Okay, if your cross sectional area is getting smaller, your velocity is getting larger. Okay. That makes sense? The flow rate is the same. Something called conservation of mass. The flow rate has to be the same, okay? So, so velocity increased in the narrow portion. How about pressure? Decreased. Pressure decreased, why? Well, I was gonna repeat what I just said, but I'm kind of scared to do that now. No, no, it's okay. Don't be scared. It's. Uh, I mean, that's the way I. That's the way I know it. That pressure is a, a little related to the energy. Right? Velocity is not. <clears throat> what is they actually Bernoulli equation? They, 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 people call it energy equation too. Okay, in that sense, you what you said is, is 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 actually kind of right. Okay, it, it can I, so. Related to flow rate, I mean, to keep the same flow rate with a smaller diameter, it has to get faster. So when it goes back to the bigger diameter, it goes, it gets slower to keep to keep the same flow rate. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Does that for the velocity? Okay, it's nothing to do with energy. It doesn't need to include energy. But for the pressure, the next question, the pressure related to the energy, right? Okay. So uh, Bernoulli equation also kind of like an energy equation. Okay. Let's say, hey, I have a one, I have a two. One is outside in the bigger portion, two is inside in the narrow portion. Let's say elevation one and the two the same. Okay. So now you know velocity V1 is smaller than V2. V2 has a greater velocity, do you agree? How about pressure? This is the equation. Left has to be equal to the right. The pressure, the pressure would have to be lower at P2. Right. 
That's right. Compared to P1. That's right. Pressure has to be lower. That, you know, initially against my intuition, you know, against my uh, <laughs> educated guess. You see, I, I, when I first, you know, when I was an undergraduate in, in school, and uh, teacher talked about this, and I thought, hey, you have a faster speed. It seems like a flow squeeze in. You have a higher pressure on those, in those portion pipe. But actually, it's, it's opposite. Actually, the pressure inside the narrow portion is lower. Okay, it's lower because of the Bernoulli principle. Okay, you know, the pressure and the velocity are inversely proportional. They are inversely proportional. If you want to have a higher velocity, you have to sacrifice getting a low pressure. If you want a high pressure, you have to stay with a low velocity. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Bernoulli equation tell you pressure and velocity are inversely proportional. So in this case, the narrow portion, although the, the flow is speeded up significantly, but the pressure is dropped significantly. If sometimes it drops even too low. And the, 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 have you ever heard the word cavitation? Cavitation is bad, okay? I never see a positive cavitation application. <laughs> Okay, cavitation is always bad. Okay, it causes vibration, it causes, because cavitation means uh, the bubble start to form at the room temperature, which is not supposed to form. And uh, for a liquid device, if the bubble formation, that will be terrible because bubble has one thousandth of the density of the liquid. If the, if the conversion starts, it has one thousandth of the density. In other words, it needed a one thousand times of the volume than the same amount of liquid. Okay, but for a pipe like this filled with liquid, do you have a one thousand times more volume? No, you don't. You don't have the volume. Then, then it will be violent. The gas, the vapor, start to form and they try to you know squeeze into the the, the system. And they're causing a lot of vibration, a lot of damage in the long run. Okay, cavitation is bad. But why cavitation will happen in this case? Pressure getting really low on two on the narrow portion. Pressure getting really low. Sometimes it even can be lower than uh, atmospheric pressure. Okay, think about a fluid start to boil. For example, water. We talk about the boiling temperature and vapor pressure in the chapter two, right? Remember, we mentioned that briefly. Okay, so so when pressure, for example, atmospheric pressure, now the, the liquid will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's room temperature; it's not supposed to boil. Okay, 100 degrees Celsius is what 273 Fahrenheit, something like that. Okay, so uh, room temperature 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. I'm safe, the liquid not gonna boil. But that's a condition under atmospheric pressure, the liquid not gonna boil, okay? But hey, what if my pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure? Then your boiling temperature gonna drop, okay? If your pressure is too low, the boiling temperature drop too much, it drop to the room temperature. Oh, okay, and the room temperature is start to boil. Okay, because of the low pressure. If you start to boil, then the vapor will start to form and the cavitation happens. Okay, that makes sense. Cavitation is due to low pressure. Okay, then for your design, as your engineer, when you design something, not only you need to make sure it works, but also you need to make sure the pressure is not too low. Okay, always put it as your as a concern. You need to check pressure inside your design, inside your system, to make sure the minimum pressure point is not too low. Then you need to identify the minimum pressure point. Okay. So this is the Bernoulli equation. Pressure in the velocity relations. It's very important, okay? Very low pressure could be 
could be devastating. Okay. Let me get started a new new notes, new page. Oh no, come on. Any questions so far? Let's look at a simple uh, simple simple example here. Not, not, not the example for calculation, but uh, reality, right? In the uh, everyday life example. Did you guys play baseball? Okay, Arthur, yeah, you're a pitcher? I actually did in high school. I did in high school, good. You, you can throw a curveball, right? Yes. Okay, curveball is not a miss. Indeed, we can throw a curveball each direction, you know? So, but, but when you throw a curveball, what do you need to do? Do you need to spin it? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let's look at the aerodynamics of the, the baseball to see why curves okay baseball you spin yeah yeah let's say if you want to the ball goes to left which direction you want the ball to spin right you want the ball go left you probably will put a counter rotating spin is that right? Am I right? Guys, correct me. You, you guys play baseball, right? I believe, yes. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, you, if you want to... Oh, is, that the top, is that the top view right now? Uh, it's top view. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a top view. You know, it's top view. We it'll see it from the sky. Okay. Okay, now... Yeah, so opposite of whatever way you want to go. Yeah, exactly, right? You spin to the direction whatever you want the ball to go. Okay. Rule of thumb. Okay, so now let's see if you spin like this, why the ball goes to the left. Okay, let's see. So the ball go forward, right? They're moving forward. Okay, so you experience uh, airflow because you are moving forward. Okay, you experience airflow like this way. Is that right? Okay, so now you, you spin like this. What happened to the velocity? Let's say the right side. When you spin the ball like this, you move the air with you going this way. So you have the incoming air. I think the velocity canceled out a little bit. V, let's say V1 decreased. What I mean V1 is the, is the velocity on the air adjacent to the ball, okay? Everybody follow me? Okay, so so you have incoming air going downward. Your, your, your ball is spinning this way, so you move the air up a little bit, so they're canceled out a little bit. Okay, so your velocity and the air next to you decrease. But let's look at the other side. Uh, you, you move the air, the spinning ball moves the air going down. And the incoming air is going down. So your velocity on this side actually going higher. The air velocity next to the ball. Okay, so V2 actually is higher than V1. Is that right? You know, from one, two, you know, they are on the same elevation. Actually, you can write the Bernoulli's P1 plus gamma Z1 plus half rho V1 square equals P2 plus gamma Z2 plus half rho V2 square. Let's say I was. Uh, can I ask a question? So yeah. does V one represents the spin, and V two represents the actual travel of the ball? I, no, 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 I've no. Got, no. I, I can't. I, I can't no. tell from the picture. I'm saying as a, as a, a certain location next to the ball, the air, the air speed. Oh, okay. It's not direction. It's magnitude. No, no. It's it's, the, it's it's just a yeah. Roughly speak, general speaking, you know, it's like a. Let's draw it better. Okay. Let's pick a point. 
okay? Everything, the force is from the air, right? Aerodynamics, that's so cool. So V1 is the velocity on, on this point next to the ball, ball moving forward. The point go, goes with it, okay? The velocity on that point, if air velocity on that point, because of the motion of the, the, the ball, spinning ball, the air is carried by the ball, spinning ball. Okay, so it carried a little bit. So it created a little bit of upward motion here because of the spinning of the ball, because it's so close to the ball. We talk about the viscous fluid, right? Remember? On the solid surface, the, the flow follow the solid surface. Solid surface is stationary, then you have a zero velocity on the solid surface, right? If the solid surface moves, the air flow, the air, adjacent to the solid surface will carry it, will move the width of the ball, okay? So you, you create a little bit of airflow due to the spin, okay? In here, the airflow you created by the ball is going downward. The airflow, a little bit of airflow created upward by the spinning of the ball, okay? So because some of, in the right side, because of the upward air velocity, it cancel out a little bit of the main velocity by the airflow. But in the in the left, because the airflow created by the spinning is downward and it added up to the main velocity. Okay, it turned out to be V two. Okay, I'm all talk about Josh. I'm all talk about the velocity in the air. I'm not I'm not talk about the velocity on the ball. Okay, this is fluid mechanics. Right? I'm talking about the fluid which in this case is the air. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so one and two, elevation is the same. Okay, velocity, so V2 is greater than V1. So how about the pressure? Lower. Yeah, P2 is less than P1. Pressure on the one in the right side is greater than the pressure on the left side. That's why it pushed the ball this way because of the pressure difference. Okay, it's all about pressure difference. Okay, this is a perfect classic example of aerodynamics. The air make the pressure difference, the movement. Okay then it creates a motion. Pressure pushes it, right? That's an example, practical example of you, of Bernoulli principle. Okay, next class, I'll give you more example uh, for chapter four. I guess chapter four, the rest of them is for Bernoulli. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. Is that good, everybody? Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice weekend. See you next week.